Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my Objective-C tutorial. Here I'm going to explain the implementation and interface code that is needed in Objective-C programming. First off, to develop iPhone apps, you will need to download some free software from Apple. You get it online at developer.apple.com forward slash iPhone. It's called the iPhone SDK, and the current version is 3.2 as of this video, but 4.0 is currently in beta. While you can program in Objective-C on PCs, you need an Apple Macintosh to use this iPhone development software. You can get a Mac Mini for around $300 on Amazon or eBay, and this is actually how I started if you want to take a soft leap into the world of Macintosh. I explained in the last article what goes into writing OOP programs. Here I'll show you the code involved. You define an object in Objective-C by creating a class definition for it. Here is an example class definition on the right and main function that uses it. The first line of code, import foundation, foundation.h, imports all the information in the file named foundation h into your program. So all the variables and methods created in foundation h are now available for your use. Then we have the interface part of the class definition, which begins with an at sign followed by the word interface. And this describes the basic variables and method that will need to be implemented in the implementation part of your program. The first line above is stating that this new object class is to be associated with the object named NS object. Every object you ever create will at some point be derived from NS object. I then state that this class object will have two variables named model number and RAM and they both will contain integer values. After the closing curly brace, I then define all the functions that need to be defined for this class. The use of the word void means that they will not be returning any values to users that call these functions. After you've defined the basic structure of your class, you close that part of the code out with the keyword at followed by the word n. Special note, it's considered good form to start the name of your class with an uppercase letter all other variables and method names normally begin with a lowercase letter, however. There is one exception, and that would be constants, which we have not talked about yet, and they are normally in all capital letters. In the implementation part of your class definition is where you create the functions that every object will have by default. You define the beginning of the implementation section with the line at followed by the word implementation, and then followed by the name of your class. In my case, that would be new computer. It is also considered to be good form to never directly allow the users of your objects to be able to directly change or view the values for the variables of the class. We implement that rule by forcing the user to get and change those values through functions. These functions normally begin with the words get and set. The first two functions will print a message on the screen when called. NSLog is a function that was created and is stored in foundation.h. Whatever values that are passed to it will be displayed on the screen of whoever executes this program. Everything placed after the at sign and between the two quotes will be displayed. If you want to show variable values in this string of text, you tell the interpreter where those variable values will show up with a symbol such as I use here, which is a percentage sign followed by the letter I. And those values will appear based off of the order they are in after the closing quote. The other two functions set the values for the two variables you define for your class. The word void states that these functions also do not return a value when they are called. Then I set the name of the function. And then after the colon, you can see something that might look odd to you in that I have the characters INT surrounded by two brackets and then followed by the letter M. This states that this function can be passed an integer. And what you're saying here is if it is passed an integer, you want to assign that value to a variable named M. You then will perform that function's actions inside of the curly braces. The code model number equals M followed by a semicolon is stating that whatever value was passed to this function should be assigned to the object's variable named model number. You can see here on the right the main function. This is the part of the program that is run first by default when the whole program is executed. I described much of it in the previous Objective-C tutorial, so if this doesn't make any sense, take a look back there. The line of code that begins with new computer followed by a star does the following. This line of code creates an object of class type new computer. Don't worry about what the star does at this point. We'll cover that at a later date. This code is stating that you want a new computer created using the blueprint or class you name new computer and it should have the name your computer. 
The next line of code states that you want the computer to provide you with storage space in memory for the your computer object. And then the next line of code returns to you the location of your new object. If you look over to the left side of your screen, uh, you could also actually combine these three lines into one. And if you did that, it would look like what you can see here under the first bulleted item. New computer followed by star, your computer equals, so forth and so on. Back over to the right, on the next line, this code stores the value of 230 in the variable named set model number. And then the next line of code calls for the method get model number to perform an action. And that action would be the outputting of the current value of the variable model number to the screen. And then finally, pull drain releases the memory your program was using back to the computer. Return zero, as I previously described, tells the Objective C executor that the program ended successfully without an error. And the final closing brace signals the end of the entire program. In the next presentation, I'm going to go through all the data types available to you in Objective C. Like I stated before, this presentation was put together because I received a request to do an Objective C tutorial by Kev1. If you want me to do a specific tutorial for you, just leave a comment below. Till next time.